Hi there, my name is Miss Linnea, and I'm excited to be with you for another week of TNT. We are in your book, Evidence of Grace. We are in section 3.3, and let's get started. Before we dive in, though, I want to make sure that we set the stage a little bit. So, when God created the world, we learned in Genesis 1 and 2 that it was good. It was very good. Everything was beautiful and perfect and great. God made man and woman, and they were made in his image, and they were created for relationship with him. And Adam and Eve got to spend time with God in the garden, a beautiful place. And they had a relationship with him where he would come and be with them. It was perfect. But sin hadn't entered the world, and it didn't last forever. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do, I want to talk and make sure that we understand two different words. The first word is sin. And now our handbook defines sin as anything that we think or say or do that disobeys God. And I might even add anything that we don't do that we know God wants us to do. That's disobeying God too. So examples of that might be lying or stealing or cheating, disobeying our parents or our teachers or leaders. Now, temptation is different than sin. Temptation is the desire to do something you know is wrong, something you know is sin. It's a really, really want to react a certain way or want to do something that I know is wrong. And there are times when everybody feels tempted, even adults. But let me think of some examples that might be for your age. Maybe your brother or sister is just being mean. They're just being mean to you. Maybe someone breaks a promise and they don't follow through with what they say. Maybe you don't want to obey what your parents have asked you to do. Maybe there's a rule at school or at church that you just don't understand or you don't like it. And so you're tempted to not follow it. Maybe you have to wait longer than you thought you would have to wait. All of these situations will help make us feel a certain way. They'll, they'll um, tempt us to react a certain way. Now, if you choose to give in to that temptation to be angry or to be um, mean or to disobey or any of those temptations, if you choose to give in to that, that's when you sin. The temptation itself is not a sin. It's what you choose to do with that temptation that's a sin. Whose fault is it? if you choose to sin? Whose fault is it if you choose to give in to that temptation? It's our fault. If I give in to a temptation, it's my fault because it's my choice to sin and disobey. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were tempted and they had to choose whether they would give in to temptation and sin or whether they would choose to obey what God wanted them to do. Let's look at what happened. To understand what really happened in the garden with Adam and Eve, we're going to read a good amount of scripture today. But to set the stage, remember, a couple weeks ago, your memory verse was talking about that God created man in his own image. And they were created to have dominion over everything in the world and to help take care of everything in the world. And that's where we're going to pick up today. Genesis 2, verses 8 and 9, and this is what it says. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God planted all of these trees and these plants in this garden. It was beautiful. It says it was pleasant to the sight and good for food. It was a great and beautiful place. But he did plant something there, and this is what we're focusing on today. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And let's pick it up, because God gives them one rule that they're supposed to follow. Verses 15 and 17 of chapter 2 say, Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
So what did it say that Adam and Eve were not supposed to do? They were not supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there was a consequence that God said would happen if they did choose to do that. It said in the Bible, God told them that if they ate of it, that they would surely die. So we're going to find out what happens in a second. But this is where another character enters the story. Last week, we learned about Satan. And we learned that Satan is God's enemy and that he will do anything he can to keep people from relationship with God. He does not want people to have a relationship with God. This is Satan's first opportunity and he comes in and he disguises himself as a serpent and he tempts Eve to disobey God. Let's find out what happened. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 8. This is what it says. As we read this, remember that every time it's talking about the serpent, it's Satan disguised as a serpent. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. So Satan is talking to Eve and he's trying to trick her and he's trying to tempt her and say, but really, what did God say? And Eve has a choice. She can keep listening to Satan or she can say, no, this is what God wants me to do. Eve knew what God had commanded them, but she listened to Satan anyways. Let's keep reading. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her and he ate. Adam and Eve had a choice and they chose to disobey God. They chose to give in to their temptation and to choose what God would not want for their lives. In that moment, when they gave in to that temptation, when they chose to sin, they broke their relationship with God. They broke that perfect relationship that they had with God. Let's find out what happened next. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse nine, but the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Chapter three goes on to tell us the consequences for the sin of Adam and Eve and how they affect us even today. But I wanna just notice one thing. Adam, when he's confronted by God, he says, the woman did it, she gave it to me. And then the woman says, the serpent did it, he, he tricked me. But here's the thing, we can make excuses for our sin all we want, but it is a choice that each of us makes individually. If I choose to have a bad attitude, if I choose to lie about something, if I choose to do something I know God doesn't want me to do, that's a choice I am making to sin. No one is making me do that. I am choosing to do that. Just wanted to make sure we were clear on that point before we moved on. Because Adam and Eve's sin have consequences that still affect us even today. We're gonna to go over to the book of Romans. In Romans 5 verse 12, this is what it says. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death 
through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And again, remember in Romans 3.23, it says, all have sinned because one man sinned, Romans 5.12 tells us, death and sin entered the world. The consequences of those, the actions of Adam and Eve cause sin to be a part of our life as well. And that's what it means that we are fallen. And we talk about Adam and Eve's fall. It was their choice to sin and their broken relationship with God. No matter how good we try to be, we are all still sinners. We are born sinners. If we disobey God even one time, we're guilty of breaking the whole law. James 2.10 tells us. But there's really good news. I don't want to leave you on such a bad note that we're all sinners, which is true. But we have a God who is good and holy and loving and kind and who created us for relationship with him. He doesn't want to leave us in that broken relationship. He doesn't want us to stay in that place where we can't have relationship with him. He made us for relationship with him. And he made a way for us to be forgiven for our sins. And if we accept Jesus as our savior, we can have a right relationship with him again. And that's what the story of the Bible is all about. Genesis starts off telling us about creation, about who God created us to be, and then about the fall. And then as we go through the rest of this unit, we're gonna talk more and more about this. But ultimately, God created a way for us to have a relationship with him. Even though we are sinful, if we accept Jesus as our Savior, he made a way so that we can have a relationship with him. All right, that's it for today. We will see you next week for 3.4. Bye.